I'm Carmine Gallo, excited today to be in conversation with Jeff Lawson. He is the founder and CEO of one of the fastest growing technology companies in the world. It's not a household name, but it's in your household and it touches your life each and every day. The company is called Twilio. Jeff Lawson is the CEO and the book is Ask Your Developer. Great stuff. Jeff, would you tell everybody how is Twilio intertwined in our daily lives? Well, Twilio is a cloud platform that powers communications like voice phone calls and text messages and video for many of the apps that you use every day, right? If you were to take a, uh, you know, a ride share and you were to text with the driver, well, Twilio is powering that. If you uh, order food for delivery and you get that text message that says, hey, your, your delivery is going to arrive in five minutes, that's Twilio powering it. If you call the contact center of many companies, Twilio is powering that interaction. So Twilio helps companies to engage with their customers. And oftentimes that is you. In fact, uh, there's 200,000 customers on Twilio's platform. And I almost guarantee that you've had an interaction with Twilio in the last day and you don't even know it. I want everyone who is watching this to understand what just happened. Jeff did not use jargon in that explanation of what Twilio does. He did not use very technical language, even though Twilio is an enormously complex technology. Jeff, where did you pick up your communication skills? Well, you know, in some ways, the more technically complicated your product is, the more you have to work to figure out how to relay it to broad audiences. You know, some people talk about the elevator pitch, sometimes say, how would you pitch it to, uh, you know, my grandmother? And uh, those are various ways I've thought about it. But, you know, ultimately, it's about connecting what you're saying to the reference point of view that your, your listener has, right? And you have to start where they are and then bring them on a journey. And yeah, look, when your product is technical, you, you have to work harder at it. But I've, that's, the, that's the, uh, the basis that I always use to uh, try to communicate. One of the books that I always really liked along these lines is the Start With Why, if you're familiar with that book. I'm in Cynic's book, of course. Uh-huh. Yep. Again, because he gets to the big picture first. Big picture before details, uh, which is something that uh, I'm always advocating and always trying to get people to understand. Don't start in the middle. Start with the, the main summary of the big picture first, which is exactly the way you describe Twilio, because it's under the hood. It's not something that we are touching physically each and every day, and yet it powers many of our experiences. So yes, I would imagine that over the years, you've had to think through how best to communicate that information. Indeed, indeed. And it's, you know, one of the other books that I've always really liked along those lines of how to communicate is Made to Stick, if you're familiar with that. By Absolutely. The, uh, yeah. yeah. I wrote the first book on how Steve Jobs gave presentations. It's called The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs. And I think to this day, Steve Jobs is still one of the, the greatest business storytellers of our time. You know, storytelling is really the, is the, one of the main tools humanity has used forever to be able to relay information. That's why we are so, we're wired to want to hear a story. Like if you think about the, the mystery, like why all those clickbait headlines, like the, you know, the five things you need to do to have better breath. It's like, you know, it's like, it's a mystery. What are the five things? That's why we're so compelled to click on it. It's basically a miniature story. In fact, it's, it's actually part of uh, the story behind the title of the book, Ask Your Developer, is, is also a miniature story, if you will. And so I've always thought that, that storytelling and um, creating a little bit of intrigue is how you actually keep the attention of, uh, you know, the person you're talking to, because that's really, we're wired to, to tell stories and to hear stories, because that's how humans have relayed information, cautionary tales, and uh, everything like that, that's helped keep us alive for thousands of years. You were one of the first original product managers at Amazon, at Amazon Web Services, the giant cloud computing division. What did you learn about communication skills from Jeff Bezos that you had adopted? at Twilio or in your other startups? Well, you know what, at Amazon, there's always this idea to work backwards from the customer, to start with what your customer needs from you and where they are and what problems they need solved and have everything you do stem from that one core. And that goes into so many things that customer-centric companies do, right? A lot of companies 
say, oh, we're customer centric and all that, but they don't actually dictate how, like, what does that actually mean? How do you actually implement? What practices do you put in place to live what you hope to be as a customer centric company? And I've always thought working backwards, starting with the perspective and the needs of your customer and having everything drive from there is one of the key insights, I think, from the, from the Amazon way that I really like. One of the things that Jeff Bezos implemented at Amazon, and I see that you are now using it at Twilio, I think is just an amazingly powerful exercise, which is writing the press release first. At Twilio, this is what you write, at Twilio, the first step in defining a new product or feature is writing the press release. Can you explain that? Because I don't think that's intuitive to most people. Absolutely. And by the way, this can be misinterpreted and used wrongly as well. So it takes some explanation. When you think about a press release, a press release is an artifact. It's a written document. And its goal is to communicate something succinctly and to keep the reader's attention to communicate an idea. Think about press releases, usually communicating some business thing that inherently no one cares about. And so you really have to grab people's attention. And you do that by connecting it with something they care about something they find interesting, something that seems important. And the most important thing that the reader cares about is the headline. Because obviously, if you don't grab your attention in the headline, you probably aren't going to keep reading. Journalists learn this in journalism school. I'm told I didn't go to journalism school. But the headline has to start by capturing your attention, therefore it has to connect with something you care about. Then the first paragraph of the press release has to put a little more meat on the bone, the most important things, and again, things you care about so that you will keep reading. And progressively through the press release, the details get hammered out, and it gets less and less important as you go down because you might assume, oh, if they stop reading towards the end, that's not the end of the world. What I really care about is going to be related in that beginning part. And if you take the construction of a press release as this thing that starts with the thing the reader cares about the most and then goes down in descending order of importance to the reader, that's exactly how you want to communicate in business. But instead of the reader, substitute the customer. And you imagine in your head that a customer is reading this press release in their you know, favorite blog or you know, back in the days in the newspaper. Would you capture their attention? Would they want to read that article? Would they read the first paragraph and be compelled to read the second and third and the fourth? And if you've done that, what you've done is created a document that outlines the things your customers care about most and how you intend to answer those things. And so the very format of the press release, if it's done with that in mind, actually help you in a very clarifying way state the things that your customers care about and how you intend to solve them. And so what I always coach people to do is don't just write a press release from the company's perspective, because people are tempted to write a press release announcing Twilio announces this and Twilio CEO said that. You're like, no, no, that's not the point. The point is, are you capturing the reader's attention, the customer's attention with every word so that you're connecting the things that we're saying with the things our customers care about? And when you read the press release through that lens, it's a very powerful business communications tool that really puts the customer at the center of that document and therefore the work that you're about to go do. Jeff, you've done a really nice job of explaining what it would look like. Can you please help us understand how, that, how this press release concept would work in your day-to-day -day job at Twilio or for a software developer or engineer? All right, let's try to do something uh, stupid and live. Here's my idea. So my book launches today, Ask Your Developer. Let's write the headline for it. I don't know if this is what you want me to do, but no, it seems please, like a fun that, exercise. That, that, awesome, great. Wait, you have one? Right. I have one. Oh, we, there's more than one, fantastic. Um, the ask, so let's say, let's imagine the headline for Ask Your Developer. What do people care about? Well, what I found by talking to many business executives is that they know they need to succeed in the digital economy because every company is becoming a software company. But how to do that is unclear, and in particular, how to hire, retain, and unleash technical talent is incredibly hard. And that's what this book is here to do. So if I were to write the headline for the book, it might be um, announcing Ask Your Developer, the key to helping every business executive unlock technical talent and win in 21st, you know, win in the digital economy. I want it. I right? You got me hooked. So that's the hook. Like, the what executive hook. doesn't want to build great software? And then the first paragraph you might say, you know, how to build great software products and great software experiences is key to success in the digital economy. Yet it is incredibly hard to, to do that. This book 
discusses them and, and Jeff as the CEO of Twilio, both a business executive running a public company and as a developer, shares his secrets for how to best interface with your software developers to get them excited, energized, and have them create the best digital products of their lives for your company. You're like, wow, well, that sounds like something I would want. And the point of all of this is, and I just don't want this uh, point to get lost on people, is when you have an idea for something creative, it could be a book, when you have an idea for a company, or you're pitching a new product, what Jeff is trying to help you understand is that you have to write physically, or at least mentally, write the release first. What would this sound like yeah. when you're pitching a product, for example, what would this sound like in the end at at when the product is actually released to a customer. Is that what you're trying yeah. to get at, Jeff? Exactly, right? Most people think about, we build a product, and the very last step we do is someone in PR writes the press release. And instead, working backwards says, write the press release first, as if we were launching this product today. What would that press release say the product does that we think our customers would really care about? And that is a very cheap and fast way to iterate on your idea. In fact, you can write that press release before you've built the product, before you've hired the team who's going to like any of that. All you need to do is a very cheap experiment. All you need is a, you know, a word processor, like write the document. And then you can take that document and actually give it to a customer. Say, hey, if I announce this tomorrow, what would you think? And you can get feedback really quickly. And now think about that press release. If you went into a bunch of technical jargon and features and blah, 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 blah. They might say, well, you know, I'm not really sure. But if you've written that press release in a way where you connect with the things the customer cares about, they should be able to tell you like, oh yeah, that resonates. I really care about that. Well, I'd love to use your new product. And you say, great, wait six months until we build it. But if they say, oh, you know, I don't know, that really doesn't seem to matter to me, then you know that you're not on the right track. And so it's a very cheap and fast and inexpensive way to learn from your customers without actually doing it. And so inside of Twilio, I think this is what you were asking earlier, inside of Twilio, what we do a lot at the onset of a project, we ask the team to go write the press release for the product they're building. And then we can review it. And when we talk about it, you say, why does the customer care about this? Why does the customer care about that? Isn't this, this seems more important than that. Why is this in the seventh paragraph and that's in the first? And you, through this process of discussing this very inexpensive and easy to write artifact, you're trying to narrow in, zero in on the things the customers care about the most. And when you do that process very cheaply, very quickly with a you know, press release document that's like less than a page long, it's very easy to write, you are iterating on the idea. And then I would say you want to put it in front of customers too and say, hey, are we on the right track? And the whole point of the exercise is to put the customer's needs first, to document it in a way that's really easy to consume and to iterate on the hypotheses of which things your customers care about early in the product, not at the end. Jeff, you have brought up a very important point that we do need to discuss, and this applies to every aspiring leader, young entrepreneur, or recent college grad of any, in any field, but especially in technical fields. In your book, you quote software developers who say there is a common misconception that when you get hired as an engineer, it's just to write code. But communication is a huge aspect of the job. Jeff, I don't think people understand that your ability to present, to speak, to write are valuable skills in your career. Absolutely. I mean, we're human beings, right? The way we get anything done is by communicating with each other. And so, um, and that goes for, for developers too. In fact, in many ways, what I am trying to do with the Ask Your Developer mindset is to create a common parlance for the business side and the technical side to communicate. Because you know, both sides, you know, in general, like they have the ability to communicate. They're human beings. They, you know, they are they're part of our species. They've had to communicate. However, they often speak different languages. You know, think about the business side. We talk about EBITDA, we talk about market share, we talk about you know, all these sort of things, right? And then developers, what do they talk about? They talk about you know, algorithms and programming language, blah, blah, blah. And it's easy to think like, oh yeah, we, like those people don't know anything or don't care about the other person's stuff. It's just, well, it's gonna be a little bit of a different language. But the interesting thing is that both sides, the business folks and the technical folks are extremely aligned in what they want to accomplish. 
both want to build amazing digital products and experiences that delight customers, get millions or billions of people using those products, and ultimately make money for the company. Like, we're very aligned. And so the book tries to cross the, you know, bridge that gap and explain from my perspective as a developer, what are the things that I care about and I think about and are in the back of my head that can really be brought to bear in building the business if business leaders seek my input or come to me uh, and bring me into those conversations. Because so many companies and so many executives, I think, you know, if you watch popular culture and you see the, the depiction of developers as math nerds and geeks who are more comfortable with quadratic equations than they are with human beings, you would think that, okay, great, like, you know, I should treat them that way. Like, you know, Steve Urkel or my favorite, Dennis Nedry from Jurassic Park, right? Like, you know, these people who just want to be left alone and don't want to talk to anyone. And if you believe that, then what are you prone to do as a business person? You're prone to say, okay, well, it's our job as the business people to define the strategy, to go do the customer research, to write the specifications doc, and hand that to the developers. And you'd be led to believe that if you just fed specifications docs and Mountain Dew into one end of this machine, the, out the other end comes code and everything is good. But the reality is that developers are full human beings. They're creative problem solvers. And the very same skills that go into solving a problem creatively with code can be brought to solve really hard business problems or hard customer problems. And so one of the biggest things that I advocate for how to bridge that gap between the two ways of thinking and the two like languages that people speak is to share problems with those developers, not solutions. Think about a requirements document. That's a solution. You're saying, go build this. Instead of doing that, share the problem. What's the business problem you're trying to solve? And if you communicate that really well, you can actually unleash your technical talent to come up with solutions you may not have heard of, to find a shorter path to solving those problems. And the end result of unleashing that technical talent to solve problems, not just solutions, is that you get better software that's written faster, that solves your customer problems better. And what executive doesn't want those things? You focus a great deal on how executives should be recruiting hiring and motivating technical talent. All of that comes down to how they communicate. Like you just said, communicate the problem first because developers want mastery. They want autonomy. They want to live a life of purpose. They want to solve problems. And so really ask your developer, this isn't just for developers if you want a career in software development. To me, this is a real leadership management book. I love the whole chapter here you have about mission statements and why the mission is so important to articulate in a way that is easy to remember and devoid of jargon. Well, I don't want to put you on the spot, Jeff, but what's Twilio's mission statement and how is it easy to remember and devoid of jargon? Our mission statement is short and simple. We are here to fuel the future of communications. And Communications is sort of obvious. That's what human beings do. That's what we enable our customers to do better as companies. We let them engage with their customers. And Fuel speaks to the fact that we are a company that provides the infrastructure that enables our customers to go build all the things that they want to do. And so as an infrastructure provider, we see ourselves as the fuel to their fire. Now, we could have said be the infrastructure that blah, 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 but we thought that Fuel is, gives a sense of, uh, you know, it's aspirational. Yeah. It's, it feels big, it feels purposeful. And so crafting those words, you both want to relay the message, but also, you know, make the, the reader feel something. And I think that's the combination. You know, one of the stories that I relay in the book, because um, I hear from executives all the time, about how, how do I, like, we don't have a lot of developers. We don't have any developers. How do we go about hiring them? You know, we're like an old school company. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my answer to them is, well, what an amazing opportunity for those developers to be a big fish in a small pond to really affect the trajectory of your organization. And I tell the story of Patrick Doyle, the CEO of Domino's Pizza. And Domino's Pizza is one of these sleeper success stories of the last decade. This is rarely known. It's kind of funny. But if you look at their stock chart for the past decade, it outperforms many of the major tech companies. That's because Domino's went from being a pizza chain to being a tech company. And it happened pretty quietly under everyone's noses. And Patrick Doyle, the CEO, started that process by recruiting a technical leader. And basically his pitch to the technical leader was this. You are going to help me transform Domino's, not just from a pizza chain, 
but into the leading, not just delivery, but what, rapid service food provider of, uh, I'm kind of making this up now, <laughs> so the words are gonna be bad. You're gonna help me transform Domino's into a technology company that is you know, delivering basically everything to customers that makes them, that, that fills their bellies, right? And thanks and, for reminding me, I remember the story, it's a good yeah, story. And the technical leader, uh, a guy named Kevin who was hired, um, you know, I talked to him for the book and they're a customer of Twilio's. I talked to him and he said, you know, I went into the meeting. I wasn't really thinking I was going to go work at Domino's. I kind of took the meeting as a favor. Right. And he walked out incredibly inspired and said, wow, imagine the impact I can have by transforming Domino's and making the experience of ordering a pizza as easy as, you know, hailing a, a car with Uber or Lyft. Right. Wow. And that was a decade long mission that he and his team then went down to transform the experience of Domino's. And I love that story because it shows how if you instill this sense of mission and the sense of purpose, any company can hire amazing technical talent because they have the opportunity to truly impact the organization. And that's why what we've just been talking about is leadership communication. Communication and successful leadership and, and the growing of a brand are all intertwined. They all come together. Jeff, that's why I'm so in inspired um, by your work. You're a very good writer and a good speaker and a good communicator. Uh, either you have a creative background um, or you've thought a lot about this. Well, you know, it's interesting. I have uh, in, in college, I have a dual degree in computer science and film. And so I, I you I know, there's storytelling in my oh, background. I know. Yes, computer science, of course. I knew that, but film. Ah, now it's coming together, Jeff. Yeah, no, it's, I, I find that that combination is, is really helpful to um, think about storytelling and to think about, you know, think about film. Like you commit something to, you know, to this medium. The only thing that anybody knows about is what ends up getting committed. That's what they see. That's what they feel. And so if you think about what's the end result of everything we're doing, the only thing that really matters is what people see and feel as the end result. And that's kind of the process of like committing something to film uh, or many creative endeavors. And I think that's one of the important things, like going back to the working backwards, the end result of all the things we do only matter to the extent the, the customer or the viewer uh, takes away and what they feel and what they experience as a result of it. If you start with that, that's the essence of, of communicating a great idea. Jeff, now it explains why. You are one of the few CEOs and one of the few business books that I've read by a founder and a CEO who cites Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. Right. And, and, and how that structure, that storytelling structure can help leaders recruit top talent. You know, one of the other stories that I share in the book, which I think was the context of sharing uh, Joseph Campbell, was when President Obama recruited developers. You're like, he did what? So it's amazing. You know, President Obama passed his signature legislation, um, the uh, Affordable Care Act, only to see it potentially fail because the darn website, healthcare.gov, was falling over. Yes. And, and he, you know, I've heard from folks, this is the maddest he was as president, was when he found out that his whole, like, healthcare for everybody, think about the Herculean feat that is to get through Congress and to get that passed into law, only to have the darn website potentially be the Achilles heel, this whole thing. So uh, my co-founder, Evan uh, of Twilio, he had recently left Twilio, didn't know what he was going to do next. He got an email from someone with a whitehouse.gov email address. And they said, hey, Evan, are you available to take a meeting next week? And he said, sure, why not? You know, white, <laughs> whitehouse.gov email address. Sounds exciting, right? So he shows up at this hotel. He doesn't even really know what this is about. He shows up at a hotel, lots of security, background checks, all this stuff, gets escorted up to the top floor to this suite and he's sitting there with four other developers. And they're all like, why are we here? Nobody knows. All of a sudden, they see the helicopter fly by. Boom, 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 boom. It's Marine One. And about five minutes later, door opens. Barack Obama enters the room. He says, we've got a problem. The federal government needs technology. Healthcare.gov is going to fail if we can't fix it. And that means healthcare for millions of people. But not just that. Our government needs to learn how to build technology as well as Silicon Valley does. And our existence as a country may very well depend on it. Your peers have said you are some of the best and brightest. I want you to come to Washington, D.C., serve your country, and help us create the U.S. digital service. Can you do it? You're like, what an amazing pitch. 
the president of Greatest the United States, ever. the leader of the free world just came in and said, your country needs your software skills. Our very existence may depend on it. Will you take up the cause? What an amazing story. What an amazing, he starts with the, here's the stakes, like healthcare for millions of people. You know, your, your country's like, you know, very essence needs your skills. And, you know, every one of those people said, yes. Jeff, talking, speaking of stories, that is a great story. Greatest pitch ever. I, I'd like you to briefly summarize a story that opens your book that everyone needs to, to hear because it does speak to conciseness and creativity and communication. Tell me about the greatest billboard ever. So we, were, we uh, had bought this billboard uh, on the 101 freeway here in, uh, in Silicon Valley. And uh, we weren't sure what we were going to put on it. We hired one of those ad firms to come up and, you know, do a bunch of, they, they talked to a bunch of customers, they talked to a bunch of employees, and they came and they pitched us a bunch of ideas. And they were just horrible. So we had this billboard that was about to go up and the firm is saying, you know, you got to send us the artwork today, you know, because we're supposed to, you know, glue it up next week. What do you want us to say? And so we're sitting in this conference room and we're, what are we going to say? And this idea had just been rattling around in the back of my head for a while. And it was this based on those TV commercials that you see for, you know, pharmaceuticals that say, you know, ask your doctor if regurgitin is right for you. And, you know, I always said in the back of my head, like, I feel like business people, like they should be asking their developers. In fact, many of the developers know about Twilio, maybe are even using Twilio in the companies, yet the executives don't know about us because, you know, they're not exactly our target audience, but we want them to be. And so the idea in the back of my head was, ask your developer if Twilio is right for you, right? And ask your developer if Twilio might help you achieve your goals of engaging with your customers, yada, yada, yada. And so I just blurted it out. How about ask your developer? And, you know, it kind of worked on two levels. You know, one was a, a nod to the developers. Mm -hmm. You're in the know. You know how to build great stuff. You know the tools and the infrastructure and the companies that you need in order to, to build amazing things but it was also a message to the executives. Hey, you know, you should go consult your developers. You should talk to them more. You should bring them into business problem solving. And so there were a lot of things that were relayed very subtly with just three words, ask your developer. And of course it creates a little intrigue. Like why did a company take out a billboard just to say those three words? And that caused people to- Three words, uh, three words three on word. a billboard, ask your developer. You know, and, uh, you know, uh, Andy Raskin, by the way, wrote a blog post saying that this was like the best billboard ever and likened it to the, um, the Hemingway story where, uh, you know, can you write a novel in six words? And, and, and I think it was, you know, for sale, baby shoes never worn. And I'm not sure, you know, Hemingway would, would agree that, you know, ask your developer has taken the mantle here. But, um, you know, it's sort of like akin to that. How can you say as much with as little? Um, and in some ways, leave the, the, the reader wanting to know more. And maybe we did that. I think this probably other people would say, like, why did you check out a, a billboard and not tell me what you do? But, you know, in some ways, it's more memorable to leave a little bit of intrigue so that people might follow up later and say, hey, you know, I was driving in today and I saw this billboard. It said Twilio. Oh, what's that all about? And if they ask their developer that, you know, a, a great conversation may ensue. I love that. I love that story. Uh, and finally, Jeff, before I leave you, if you can just speak to very generally to young graduates today, people entering the technology field. Uh, yes, your technical skills are very important, but could you tell them how writing and communication and presentation skills will play a role in their success? Ultimately, I would, I would say to folks, look, one of the most important skills that you will have in your life, and that's business, that's personal, that's relationships, is empathy. And empathy is the act of really getting into the shoes of somebody else, understanding their position, understanding their point of view, where their mind is at, et cetera. And the more you can get in the habit of trying to understand the other person and then tailor what you say and how you say it to bring another person into what you're trying to communicate with them, that is such a core skill. And that goes for business, talking to customers, writing a, a press release, but also goes for, you know, your partner in life or anything like that. And so invest in trying to understand empathy and start by thinking about the other person and listening to them before you speak. And one of my favorite, you know, quotes that's out there is, you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth. So use them in that proportion. Jeff Lawson, thank you. Congratulations on Ask Your Developer. Excellent book, well-written, terrific leadership book not just for people in technology, but, 
but really for, uh, for any field. So congratulations and thank you so much for giving me some of your time and talking about these very important topics I think are important for everyone. Thank you, Carmen. Great to be here today.